we got this Polydor timer. And how many lines of code did I write? Zero. How many terminal commands did I execute? Zero. This thing handled it all for me. Here's how to get ahead of 99% of software engineers with the power of AI. And this is really important to know nowadays because as they say, you're not gonna lose your job to AI. You're gonna lose your job to someone who knows how to use AI. And as someone with two computer science degrees, both with concentrations in AI, I'm gonna teach you the exact blueprint you need to dominate in this field. And I'm not just talking about vibe coding or GPTing your way through homework assignments, you need to learn how to be smart. I'm going to show you how to study, make, automate, run, and trial and error your entire workflow using AI to get ahead of 99% of software engineers. So if you're ready to level up, let's dive right in. First up in our smart framework, we got S for study. So the beauty of AI is that you can study and learn about AI using AI. And I recommend the three strategic S's approach. First is search, learning new things. And for this, perplexity is your go. Too. This is like AI Sherlock Holmes, the world's greatest detective who investigates multiple sources simultaneously, connects the dots from scattered evidence, and presents you with a deductive conclusion with proof. And unlike Google search where you have to click through 10 different articles, piece together conflicting advice, and wonder if that Stack Overflow answer from 2018 is still relevant, Perplexity does all the heavy lifting for you. It reads sources, synthesizes, and gives you a comprehensive answer. And as a software engineer, let's say you're tasked with building a real-time chat application. Instead of spending hours jumping between different blogs, documentation sites, and Stack Overflow, you can ask Perplexity one question and get a complete answer from multiple sources with citations. It breaks down the pros and cons of WebSockets versus WebRTC, explain the scaling considerations, recommend specific libraries like Socket.io or native implementations. I personally like it better than ChatGPT because it provides citations and real-time web results, which actually ends up making it way more accurate. So this tool will make sure you know your stuff, and if you're aiming to be a top 1% software engineer, you better know your stuff and know it well. The second S is summarize, make it concise. Notebook LM is a game changer for this, and I'm telling you, this is like the Doctor Strange of AI. The ability to connect different dimensions of knowledge and bring this all back to a human an understandable format is truly next level. For example, if you're a computer science or software engineering student preparing for technical interviews, you can upload your algorithms textbook, lecture slides from data structures, and some leak code solutions. Right away, Notebook LM automatically shows you how, for example, the sorting algorithms from your textbook connects to the optimization problems you're seeing in leak code. My personal favorite feature of Notebook LM is that it can transform all your study materials into personalized podcasts. Has anybody played with Notebook LM, the podcast feature? Oh my God. With one click, the audio overview feature creates an engaging conversation between two AI hosts who discuss your uploaded content like they're hosting a tech podcast. Data structures and algorithms. Mm -hmm. We're doing a deep dive. Oh, hey, welcome. What's up? What's the difference between a stack and a queue? Stacks operate on a last in, first out, or LIFO principle. Now, queues are different. They follow a first in, first out. Yup, you can actually interrupt and join conversations in real time if you have any questions. You literally have a mini tutor right there. Third S is skills and upskilling effectively. If you want to learn like a top 1% software engineer, Cody.tech is the perfect AI resource. It's a great environment that gives you bite-sized lessons, projects, and quizzes in which you can learn various different coding languages like JavaScript or Python. Personally, I would recommend starting with Python, especially if you're trying to get into AI and machine learning. The best part is they rely on actual project-based learning for you to understand the concepts completely. Because I would say 99% of people end up getting stuck in what we call tutorial hell, watching videos, reading textbooks. But the way to break free of all of that is to build something meaningful, and that's how you master these coding languages. Plus, as you're learning, they have an AI assistant to help you understand the coding language and answer any questions that you have. And they're 100% completely free, so go ahead and get started. But if you do want premium features like unlimited AI queries, you can use Sag 20 for a 20% discount. So now that we established our groundwork, let's move on to the M in our smart framework, 
make. And by making, I mean designing and presenting. So for the design part, you need to use Napkin AI because it can turn really complicated systems into clear visuals instantly. Think of like Tony Stark's holographic workshop, just like how he visualizes his Iron Man suit designs in 3D space. Napkin AI takes your complex system architecture and shows them in a professional diagram just like that. And as a software engineer, let's just say you're building a microservices architecture for an e-commerce platform. Instead of struggling with your whiteboard for hours, all you have to do is be like, hey, I need an e-commerce system with user authentication, product catalog, shopping cart, payment processing, inventory management, and order fulfillment. Tell it everything that you need. And then instantly we got professional architecture diagrams with everything we need from data flow, API endpoints, and suggestions for load balancers. But the true game changer is it'll identify bottlenecks for you, like showing your payment service might become a point of failure. So it actually does the designing and the thinking. And this is huge because if you want to be a good software engineer, you're not just going to be writing code all day. You better be designing and solving problems. And a lot of people do just focus on code, but now for you, with the advantage of Napkin AI, you can get ahead of so many people so quickly. And as for when it comes to presenting, you need to use Gamma AI. And this will transform your technical projects into presentations that will actually impress people. Say you have a coding project you've been working on and now you need to present it. All you have to do is feed Gamma your GitHub readme, user testing results, and technical notes. Within minutes, Gamma creates a compelling narrative, automatically structuring your presentation to show problem solutions technical innovation, and competitive advantage. The AI suggests demo flows that highlight your most impressive features. Plus, when creating documentation, Gamma can take your notes and make it into guides and API documentation so other people can actually follow. All right, so now we've laid the groundwork of being able to study and make things like designs, documentations, presentations, all using AI. Now let's move on to the juicy part AI coding. And for A, we got automation. And first, we got to talk about cursor. And I want you to think of this like having Jarvis from Iron Man, but for coding. It doesn't just auto complete code for you, but it'll build things out architecturally and holistically. Say you want to build a to do app with user authentication. Instead of spending hours researching how to set this up, you just tell cursor, I need a to do app where users can sign up, log in and manage their personal task lists with add, edit, and delete functionality. And boom, Cursor analyzes what you need and generates entire modules of code that fit perfectly. Authentication setup, database schemas, API endpoints, and even proper error handling. But my favorite feature is that it doesn't just code like a bot. It helps you architect, and that's actually a trait of a senior software engineer. Like when you're building something, Cursor will literally tell you, hey, you're dealing with an API rate limiting factor, and it's just caching strategies, or it'll warn you about edge cases that you need to account for. And please do not be that guy that put the prompt into ChatGPT and copy and paste his code. It will mess up for you a lot of times, but with Cursor, because it's literally the ID in which you're working in, it's way better and more accurate. And so if you're a regular software engineer with the addition of Cursor and effectively correctly using it, you will, in theory, have the skills of a senior software engineer. So you should be good. We also have to talk about GitHub Copilot because this is amazing at implementation level stuff, like understanding your specific domain and coding patterns. Imagine having Hermione from Harry Potter. She's read every programming book ever written and always knows exactly what you need before you even finish asking. If you're working on a project, it'll help you reformat your code, rename variables, or even fill out complete functions with parameters if you just write a comment telling it exactly what to do. And unlike GPT, it actually has context of the code base, so it can give you a very accurate representation of what you need. And I'm not joking, ever since this tool, Stack Overflow has become useless. Because I don't need to know any documentation or specific method calls because I just write a comment and Copilot knows exactly what I want. And now even a software engineer who's just out of college can develop so much faster and so much better. All right, now moving on in the smart framework, we got R. And here we need to run terminal, run commands, and run our programs. And for that, I genuinely do not know a better tool other than warp.dev. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a terminal that has AI integrated into it. Like it can create full projects, it can write code for you, but the best thing is it understands what terminal commands need to be run. For example, I'll be like, do I have 
Python installed. And it has Claude running in the background. And so yes, it finds the terminal command I need and checks if I have Python 3 installed. And yes, we got it. But hey, what if I want to create a Pomodoro project, I would have to set up my code study and put all these things together. No, 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 no. This terminal will create it and run it for you. Guess what? I'm not even going to specify specifically what a Pomodoro even is. Let's see what research it does. It has Claude so it can understand it. So it's going to write up the code. It's creating the diff and by auto approving, it'll just kind of automatically like run everything through. Okay. So it's generating the command to run it. Okay. So it did it in the command line. Now I'm going to say create a nice UI and download some packages you need from the internet to accomplish this. Okay. So it tries to find this Pygame game tkinter pillow and then, oh, the command failed. So it's going to run another command. This command failed. So now it's going to think of what next command to find. I used to spend hours just like going through terminal, trying a command, it not working, putting the error into Google, trying to find the stack overflow. Now I don't have to worry about any of that because this handles everything on the back end. Okay, sweet. So it tells me exactly what happened and it gives me a list of things, but nothing is good unless I verify it and make sure it's good. So I'll be like, run the project for me. I don't even have to click the run button or know the terminal command to do that. So it's installing everything. I don't even understand this at this point, but I don't need to. There we got it. We got this Pomodoro timer and it'll start counting down. I can pause it. I can reset it. Does everything. And how many lines of code did I write? Zero. How many terminal commands did I execute? Zero. This thing handled it all for me. The final piece of the smart framework is T trial and error. And this is what actually differentiates regular software engineers from the top 1%. Because the industry is rapidly changing, there are so many tech tools that are advancing. In fact, when AI first came out, it was able to make some simple code suggestions that was seen as revolutionary. But then ChatGPT really took over the world and that became the hot thing. And then we have the evolution of GPT wrappers and many other platforms that have enhanced fine-tuned models and truthfully they're just going to continue to innovate. So the key thing to being a good software engineer is staying up to date on everything that goes on because truthfully this video can go on forever and ever. There are so many tools out there like Replit. It uses AI for quick prototypes and testing and different frameworks and I didn't even mention Windsurf which is great for collaborative experimentation when you need to test ideas real-time with AI or even code sample box, which is an AI platform optimized for front end development. And so after watching this video, what I really want you to do is just pick maybe one or two of these tools that I mentioned and overall start integrating a little bit into your workflow. And once you identify, hey, this is actually good. I like this. This actually makes me more productive. Then start by adding a few more tools, but keep up with what's going on in the market, because maybe at this time next year, there could be a whole new suite of tools that make all the current day AI seem useless. And if you want to stay up to date on everything that goes on in tech, I have a free newsletter down below in the description in which I cover the latest tech trends and updates in software engineering and AI. I also have a community called SWE Launchpad in which you get direct access to me in which we talk about everything in software engineering, different AI tools and how to get hired. And since it's a community, you'll be able to network and learn from one another. And so if you're interested, link for that will also be down below in the description. We already have quite a few people in the community so it would be great to see you on the other side. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in if it's even worth learning how to code in this age of AI, you might like this video right here.